Well, good morning, magandang umaga. <laughs> and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Hapon just reminded me, James, well, he didn't say James, he said dad. <laughs> he said dad, you know, you haven't started your video today, your episode for today. And I'm like, oh, you know, you're right. I'm already downstairs. I'm working on the granite. Uh, Nessa's downstairs with me on the computer on our Skype session. And it is uh, the, the 10 o'clock break for the workers here. Uh, so we are going to get today started. We'll go do a real quick catch up after the intro here. And I'll show you what uh, accomplished has been accomplished upstairs uh, in the bathroom area up there. And also what I'm doing down on the granite uh, downstairs in the basement area. So let's go ahead and get today started. So without further delay, let's get today's video underway. Well, now so I can get you updated and me updated on what's going on upstairs, uh, let's go ahead and walk into the shower area, uh, the bathroom, the comfort room up here on the second floor uh, so we can see what the workers, the tilers, did this morning for the first couple of hours. Now, I will tell you something uh, I will identify in just a moment. There was an issue last night uh, when I came up, and I missed it yesterday, even when I showed everybody uh, where we were at. And if you go back to yesterday's video and you look into more detail, you'll see what I'm talking about. So for this morning, uh, the, the worker, uh, let me move my headset. Or this, uh, these are noise canceling. And the noise canceling, what they, what they do, the noise canceling helps me with the, uh, for ear protection. Let's go ahead and look and see what's going on this morning inside the shower area. Now I will tell you right now, last night, what I was going to talk about earlier, last night I found a big problem. And the big problem was, you see the tiles up here that have the tape on it? Now last night, what happened was I came to do a little bit of an inspection. I always check to make sure that there's no uh, excessive towel adhesive in between the towels. So while it's still just a little bit soft, uh, but not hardened all the way, not cured all the way, then I can remove some of it easily. So when I came up here and I looked, what I found out here is that the tiles at, at this point right here, they were sticking down, oh, I'm gonna say four, uh, four to five millimeters, the edge was overhanging and not matching up with the bottom tiles. I had a big uh, overlap and it looked absolutely horrible. And what happened, what happened was somehow uh, this portion down here, the bottom, when they set the tiles, they pushed it up, they pushed those tiles up and it wasn't an even distribution for the top. So there was a big hump inside there. And I'll show you a picture. I took a still picture and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Well, they quickly fixed this area and I had two loose tiles on this corner right here, the two mosaic tiles. And I will tell you what made it so easy for them to do the correction this morning. Last night, I pulled off this, these sets of tiles and these underneath the bottom. I think I did two sets up here, these here, and those two. And what I did, I scraped off the tile adhesive before it was allowed to cure 100% and I gave them enough area there so they could reapply the tile adhesive this morning without having to chip off the hardened tile adhesive. So I think that was a good move on my part uh, and it made it easy. See, obviously they got that finished. Now the other thing that's being done this morning is on top of this area, uh, they're putting tile. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how that's going. So we have tile here on the top. Now, you might be saying, you know, why are you even worried about tile on the top? Well, if you don't have tile on the top, what you're gonna have is raw concrete up here, and it's gonna collect a lot of nasties and bugs, and, and it'll be very difficult to, uh, to clean in this area up here. As well as if you ever wanted to put something up here, like some, some kind of a decoration uh, for the shower area, or even a plant up here, uh, you, you wanna finish tile up here. So I'm glad they did this. I think it looks great. And uh, now they're moving on to this section over here. Okay. 
Well, that's about as good as it gets for me. It could use a little bit of waxing polish and uh, it will be perfect. This is, this is better than the stuff that the guys are doing for finishing for the window ledges and everything like that up there in the house. Uh, the key to this, I found out, the key to it is to do some wet polishing. I put a little spray, I had a little hose there while I was using the pads, the polishing pads, and it makes a huge amount of difference uh, between your final quality of your finish as opposed to doing it dry. And it even says it on the pack. It says uh, recommended using wet, uh, wet the surface down. Uh, so it looks really good. I'm talking with Ness here right now. She's been, she's my quality control. She just inspected, uh, she just inspected everything I did. She's down here in the basement with me. Good thing that the Wi-Fi uh, can make it down to the basement from the first floor. So before I can call this project done, I have two things that I need to do. Obviously when I'm, as I have to get holes inside for the pole to be able to go through and sit inside the table. And the other thing is I do want to do that decorative trim just underneath uh, the ledge of the, the granite slab on there. And I can do that today. I can do that. I can't do the hole yet because I don't have the diamond cutter, uh, the circle diamond cutter. So I still have to find that somewhere. I need uh, a, between a 50, I think a 50 would be fine. 50, is, 50 millimeter is common. It's just not common in the stores around here. Uh, and if you order it, say like on Lazada, it will take, it will take like 11 to 29 days to arrive because it comes in from China. Uh, but I believe if I do make a trip to any of the other stores, if I can get to CW or one of the other stores, even maybe one of the bigger wool kinds that has a little bit more stock, I might be able to get the 50, uh, the 50 millimeter diamond saw cutter. So uh, that's where I am here. It's, it's after lunchtime. I need to go upstairs, get something to eat, and then I'll come back down. I'll probably work on the, the decorative trim on that one. Then I'll get it upstairs. We'll go ahead and put it out on the patio on the back porch, but not use it as an umbrella stand yet until I get those holes cut. Uh, but at least I can use it if we have guests over um, whenever. Now before I go to lunch, I just wanna show you, we have the granite slab laid out for cutting. And I will tell you right now, the, the marks on there for the template, they're wrong. Um, and this is something you need to be really, really careful with, with your workers, especially on an expensive piece of material like granite. Now, our width for the one upstairs, the width of the windowsill with one centimeter overhang on both sides is 27 centimeters. Uh, 27 centimeters. Then the width of the glass, the tempered glass that we'll be using in there is 10, uh, 10 millimeters or one centimeter. So 27 minus one <laughs> is 26 obviously. Now before so, I go on any further, let's go upstairs and I'll explain to you how we're going to do the install and why we're going to cut this piece of granite the way we're going to cut it. All right, now back up here on the second floor inside the bathroom area, you saw where they did the correction this morning to the mosaic tile on the ceiling. Now the area that we're concerned about right now, oh, it's probably easier to look from the outside. Now it's this area, these two window frames right here. Now the desired goal here is to have this framed in and it's going to be framed in at the width of 27 centimeters. Uh, 27 centimeters will give us one centimeter of uh, overhang on this side and one centimeter of overhang on the other side, just like we did here. If you look at this window. So it's going to match as so everything is kind of coordinated. Now, to, to get that 27 and to be able to put a piece of uh, tempered glass inside, which we're going to put 10, uh, 10 millimeter glass inside here. So obviously 27, and then we're going to sandwich in the uh, one centimeter of glass. Now there's three ways in my mind uh, that I could logically say that you could put glass inside here. You could put the 27 centimeter thick depth of granite around here and then you could put a little mini frame on the inside and, and insert, your, insert your glass inside there, your tempered glass. But then you would see that that little frame that you would wedge inside is sort of like you would do when you're building a door 
and you put the glass in and you cover it up with a little bit of decorative trim. You could do that here. I don't want to do that because I want it to be clear all the way through. Plus this isn't very wide and it would be very noticeable seeing that trim in there. Now another way that you could do it, you could, you could actually route out a groove all the way inside your granite all the way around. And with thick enough on both sides so that you could slide it in one way pop it in the other and move it and as long as you have a good silicon around you wouldn't even see it and it'd be nice and even but it's very difficult task to do i've done this before and it's extremely difficult and you have to have extreme accuracy both with your frame and both with the tempered glass that you have to have cut for the window frames and i will tell you there's nothing uh there's nothing that i've seen when it comes to accuracy <laughs> perfect accuracy in building in the philippines so far uh so, enough said there so option three which is the option that we're going to go with here is to take your 27 centimeter piece of uh, granite slab that's going to go for the walls and the top inside here and then what you're going to do you're going to subtract uh, 10 millimeters and it's best to do just a little bit more uh, it probably 12 millimeters to give you a one millimeter worth of play on both sides and you're going to cut that off so basically you're going to be right around this slab is going to end up being about 26 centimeters and it's going to be split and what you're going to do is you're going to put one side in first all the way around you're going to frame it in but not put the small side which is going to be on the back side back up here remember only about three centimeters and you won't install that until after you install your tempered glass so basically this whole frame on this side will be completed we'll, we'll get the glass cut put in and then at a later date we'll put the other side and we'll sandwich in the tempered glass between the two sets of granite so I believe you'll have to agree with me that option three will probably be the best approach for this installation method. It's the quickest, it's the simplest way to do the install, and it will allow for any variances such as the wall, the tile, and the, uh, and the tempered glass itself. Uh, so that's what we're going to go with. And uh, let me go ahead and get downstairs and get some lunch before these guys get back to work up here. All right, well, this is take two. I already did this segment of the video, and what I found out was when I went to do editing, luckily I started doing the editing early today, and I had zero audio on here. I, I'm thinking that I have to make sure my, uh, my microphone is plugged in. Well, it, it all looks normal to me right now. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see on the next editing round. Well, anyway, when I came out here earlier, what I wanted to show you was the table. I have the table out here on the, the patio and the table is all done with the exception of putting the hole I need to get the hole in the center and uh, and that would be for the umbrella here now I have to find a 50 millimeter a 50 millimeter diamond cut uh, saw to be able to cut that hole inside there I haven't been able to find one locally they're on Lazada but they're I think they said most of them are 11 to like 30 days for delivery because they have to come over from China uh, I don't know if I'm in any of the big box stores other than the ones right around here I'll see if I can find one in one of the other stores or maybe a different type of hardware store But right now it's just going to be used as a table until I can get the hole in for the umbrella Well, that is done uh, and I'm very happy with that. You see the trim? Uh, the trim work came out good uh, I, I just have to fill in those holes where those screws are right now. I don't really like the, the screw holes being exposed. Uh, maybe I can get those little decorative divot things that you plug in. It's like a little round ball and you pop it in. So it's sort of like a little dowel type of a thing and uh, fill that in. Uh, I'm not worried about that right now. It's functional right now. It is on the porch, uh, but it's extremely heavy. And what I was explaining in the video that had no audio in it, I would calculate that as being around 45, around 45 kilos. It's over 100 pounds. Uh, maybe, uh, it's, it's over 100 pounds. I know, I'm pretty good with calculating weights. And I carried it, it might be even closer to 125 pounds. I carried it inside and outside the door of the garage so many times today doing the polishing of the stonework and my back, I thought I was gonna pull a muscle in my back or even worse, maybe something with my backbone. So to bring it up here to the second floor, I had my gardener. He had two old men carrying up this, <laughs> two, two old men carrying up this really heavy table here today. But it's not gonna fall over. This little umbrella with a lot of wind is not gonna cause this to fall over. I'm, I'm, I assure you. So it's out here. Um, there were some issues with some of the tile work. Again, I, 
I, I wrote out the exact dimensions of how the window frame is supposed to go for the granite that we're doing, you know, the black granite inside the shower. And there was some kind of confusion in there. And it was probably confusion on my part, the way I tried to explain it. And, and that has to do with a language barrier. I really need to learn how to speak Tagalog. And uh, I will work my best on that in the years to come. Uh, it's both beneficial for me and beneficial for the people around me as well. So I have to, <laughs> I have to work on that. But, and we'll talk about that when I go upstairs uh, at the end of the day. Well, let me go back inside the house. I have two shout outs tonight. I need to get out today before we continue on with today's episode. Now the first shout out for today is an anniversary shout out. An anniversary shout out goes today on September 29th to Lilia and Eugene who are celebrating their 29th wedding anniversary. So anyway, to the two of you, happy anniversary. And our second shout out today is a birthday shout out. And I, I should be whispering this because when I did it during the first take of the birthday shout out today, um, one of my devices inside the house is the same name as the birthday recipient today. And the device kept trying to talk back to me, asking me questions in the middle of this. Well, hopefully, it doesn't happen again, but who knows. Anyway, today's birthday shout out goes to Alexa, Veronica, Ruth Ann P. Arilon, who is in the 12th grade at Makayan National High School in Makayan Bulacan. Anyway, her dad, Alex, Alex Arilon, he is an OFW over in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and a regular contributor to my PI Dream. So I want to wish you, Alexa, a wonderful and happy 18th birthday. Well, here it is, the end of the day again. Can you believe it? Another day gone by and running into the weekend since this is Saturday. Uh, tomorrow is Sunday and it is going to be a relaxing day for me. I don't have to go uh, shopping for any building supplies. I was supposed to go for a vet appointment but I got that rescheduled. Let's see where we are on what seems to be the never ending story for getting this bathroom, this comfort room completed. Uh, we saw earlier this morning they did the correction for the mosaic up there. Um, for the, this was tiled because there was no tiles in this area right here, so that's done now. Uh, remember, all along the floor it wasn't done, but half of it now is done, and this section still needs to be done also. Uh, we, we had some issues this morning with regard to the way these tiles were installed, and I told you I was going to talk about this a little bit. Now what I asked the guys to do, I asked them to grab a carpenter square, and I believe my carpenter square is down here. So this is, this is what I asked them to do. I asked them to make sure they took the carpenter square, and when we did all these window enclosures, uh, that we did a carpenter square, and I needed the tile on both sides uh, to be exactly the same. All this needed to be square, up and down. And they did, at the very beginning, all this on the bottom, everything is square, both on one side as well as on the other side. You see right here. But what ended up happening, for some reason, as we started going up, look at the gap over here. I don't know if you can see, but it just, they quit using my carpenter square here, and what they relied on was they just were using the same measurement. They were measuring these tiles, the width, and they just kept putting it up there. Now these walls aren't really that straight, and they did use a level a little bit on here, a level, but not the carpenter square. I said we had to be really careful about how we do the squareness of these, because remember, we are using tempered glass inside here, and the tempered glass is gonna be squared when it comes from the factory, when they make it, because it's a manufactured product. Uh, well, it's, these are, weren't quite square, but we will be able to do the correction. We'll be able to do the correction with the, the granite. But what they did here, if, I don't know if you look, these tiles, they, if they would have made these tiles a little bit longer, had them overhang, because we we're going to be filling this up with tile adhesive. What they did, these tiles are cut almost to the same width as the concrete behind it. So there's going to be there's going to be a gap, a bigger gap on this side. It's going to be very difficult to hide. Uh, this is going to be extremely difficult to hide, and it's going to it's going to be kind of obvious. Uh, we're going to have a gap inside here. 
Uh, I, I just don't understand it. Uh, but we'll, tr do, we'll do our best to make it look as good as possible. They were going to remove all of these tiles in here, but if they remove all these tiles, we would have to purchase more tiles again. And I can't tell you how many tiles we've already replaced just to do to unsquareness and improper tile installation. So uh, we're gonna do our best. Second problem we had today uh, had to do with cutting, cutting the black granite for this area right here. And we'll go downstairs and we'll talk about that briefly. Now down here, we have the beginnings of the cutouts for the walls and the, the top and the bottom of the window, uh, the window area inside the shower. Now, I, I, I don't know if I can find the little piece of paper that I gave the guys, but I drew out on the paper, I drew out the exact dimensions of both the sides here, these are the sides, cut out out of a big piece of stock, piece of granite like this one right here, and these are also the sides, but these are the piece that's going to be on one section that's going to, and I'll, I'll So now these two pieces, these two pieces right here cut out, these are going to make up the sides, the sides of the window area inside the shower area on the second floor. Uh, this will be for the second window, this is for the first window inside here. Believe it or not, it takes up one entire piece of slab to do one window. Because you see the size of these? So it's a slice here, another big slice, and then some remnant pieces, that's for the top and the bottom. Well, anyway, this piece here, I drew out a design. I can't find the, the drawing that I gave to the tiler. But this one right here, I said to make this one 23, and I, I drew it. I put uh, the, the ends, this side to this side, with the 23 centimeters in the center, and then another section, which is three centimeters, which is up behind me on top of the stonework over here. So that's 23 plus three is 26, and then one centimeter in between, which is where we're going to embed, we're, we're gonna put the sandwich in, uh, we'll call it sandwich in, the, the uh, tempered glass, so when you add 23 plus three plus one, that gives you 27 centimeters. 27 centimeters will give us one centimeter overlap on both sides of the tile, the finished tile inside the shower area. Uh, so something happened, I don't know what happened, but this ended up being, when he cut this piece of right here, he cut it about 27 and a half. So it was about one and a half centimeters bigger than the, the, what was on the design. And I asked him, I said, why was it on there? And I saw the confusion in, in his eyes, and I think it had to do with, he was thinking, first he was thinking about the tempered glass. Instead of subtracting from 27 to one centimeter, he added one centimeter on there. And where the other half a centimeter came from, I have no, I have no idea. Well, anyway, I thought maybe we could use it. So I went up there, I measured it, and it would just hang over so much on both sides. It would just look terrible. So I said, we have to cut it again. So I believe he cut one of these. I don't know if he cut both of them or just one of them right now. Uh, but one of these is supposed to be exactly 23 centimeters. I'll check later on to see. Uh, but that's the way we're going to have to do the rest of it. I think he knows now that these have to be cut at 23. Anyway, it's one of those trial and error kind of things. Uh, again, you, you think, you think, you make an assumption that, they, that your workers understand exactly what you want. And again, it could have to do with communication problem, uh, but usually when you draw stuff out, it's usually not an issue when it's very specific in the drawing. But I've seen that plenty of times during our build here at Villa Feliz. And yeah, am I talking too much? Huh? Okay, I think how poem wants my attention, so I need to cut this short. So anyway, you see the problem we had, but we fixed it. It cost us a little bit of time again today. Uh, Monday should be continuing with the cutting of the granite, and uh, I think possibly we can start putting some of the granite in there. Now, now the, the, the way the granite is going to be done, remember there's two pieces. There's a, there's a 23 centimeter piece, and there's a three centimeter piece. Well, this three centimeter piece is not going to be installed until after the temper, tempered glass is uh, created, uh, manufactured, and delivered. And then this will be very easy. We'll push it right up against that big section right there, and then we'll sandwich it in, and we'll do some adhesive and put this inside there, and it'll be a very nice, clean install. Uh, so that is the, the window saga for the bathroom on the second floor.
Man, the sun is really bright right now, and it doesn't really do much good to do this because this is this is covered with granite. <laughs> this is covered with granite dust. Let me see if I can clean this off a little bit so I can get this uh, the sun out of my eyes. I don't normally I don't normally do the closing in this spot at this time of day, and the sun is directly in this corner right here. Uh, but and if I were in the other corner, you would be seeing the sun pointed right in your lens in your eyes so I'm, I'm gonna do it like this I think we're okay so like I said today there were there were some challenges there's some challenges every single day but if you were not on site and you weren't, weren't on site doing oversight like I always talk about uh, the results the final product that you're gonna get were probably gonna be a lot less desirable than if you were there helping with some of the corrections uh, and and some people bring up the topic and it's not many people that do it uh, but so occasionally I will get somebody who will make a remark on the channel about uh, you you can't tell them they're doing something wrong or you uh, you can't criticize your workers or anything like that because you're in the Philippines well you can you can but there's a way of doing it there's a way of doing it uh, 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 correctly politically correctly uh, and and justifiable uh, where uh, you don't make it seem like they made made a bad mess mess up uh, uh, what I'm trying to get at if you if somebody makes a mistake you just say oh you know we, we have a mistake but this is really the way it needs to be done or would you mind would you mind correcting it and you show them and normally, nine times out of ten, your workers are going to be like, oh, okay, yeah, I understand, we'll get it done. But if you do it uh, in a, with a bad temper or uh, with some type of an attitude, it's going to end up biting you uh, in more ways than one. And we won't get into that right now. So I, I, try to be, I try to be as diplomatic as I possibly can with the workers. And we do have a, a, a extremely, what I think is a, a good, extremely good relationship uh, with my workers and even with my builder, even with some of the, the ups and downs that we have about trying to get things accomplished and budgets and, and logistics and things like that. So the whole point to the story, the whole moral to the story is uh, treat your workers like you would like to be uh, treated. If you were one of the workers yourself, if you put yourself in their shoes sometimes and you have compassion and uh, you work with them, then you'll get a lot more things done uh, without any feelings getting hurt. And that's, a, that's the best way to approach that type of a situation. So again, this is the weekend. I'm going to try to get this thing edited out and early like I did last night. I got it out early. And, and uh, I'm going to go take a shower. Uh, oh, Tess, Tess made Tortang Talong for me. Uh, so I got to run down and pick the Tortang Talong up from the uh, right next to um, Roy and Michelle's uh, uh, little Sorry Sorry shop. Uh, so Tess has that for me. So I will be eating... Uh, Tortang Talong tonight. So I'll have that and then I might sit out and relax out here and put a drink right here on this newly established <laughs> table that I just created. Uh, I'm, I might enjoy the patio tonight. Uh, so that's my plans. Uh, tomorrow is Sunday. It's going to be a uh, non-work day and probably a non-video day as well. I have no plans except for relaxing here in the backyard. Uh, so we will probably resume videos and episodes on Monday. That being said, if you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up, please share, and if you have not subscribed, just click on that little My PI Dream heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen. You'll be subscribed and you'll be notified the next time I upload a new video. So until such time, you have a wonderful and blessed weekend.